Welcome to Niagara Falls. We're here in Niagara Falls, Canada, and just across is actually the United States of America. So let's take some photos. There's no real segue there. We'll just let's go. So Niagara Falls isn't one of the seven natural wonders of the world. It's kind of an honorary eighth member. And it's because humans have had quite an influence on how it actually looks. There's this joke that they turn the falls off at night and it's actually kind of true. The water going over the falls is controlled at all times. Daytime hours, there is a minimum flow required for tourism and scenic purposes. And anything beyond that is sent to the hydroelectric plants. At night, the falls are reduced to about 25% of their natural flow. This means that unless you were here in the 1800s, you probably have never seen Niagara Falls at its full natural self. The weather today, a bit troublesome. So I'm trying to figure out what shot I want to set up for. It's going to be a long exposure. I want the real nice soft water, 10, 12 second exposure. And I'm thinking that this piece of the Horseshoe Falls is actually going to look the best. There's kind of some water in the foreground that'll create a little bit of a natural frame, as well as the Niagara River up top that'll create kind of the top of that frame. It's kind of a rule of thirds or a, a, a modified rule of thirds. We have the Peak Design Travel Tripod, as well as an Nikon Z6 II and the 24 to 70 f2.8 and a 10 stop neutral density filter, which is basically just going to obstruct enough light coming through the lens to allow me to do something like that 10 or 12 second exposure uh, so that I'm actually able to get the, the softness of the water. Not really true to life, but prettier, prettier life. So I'm going to start with a 10 second exposure and go from there. That might even be too long. Almost made the 10 seconds almost made it a little too silky. Whirlpool Rapids. We're now on the Niagara Parkway. The drive that Winston Churchill himself said it was the prettiest Sunday drive in the world. I wonder if he ever rode this. It's actually possible that, that he took this. I don't know. Let's look it up. Has Winston Churchill taken the Niagara Aero Car? I should correct myself. Uh, Winston Churchill said it's the prettiest Sunday afternoon drive in the world, meaning that he has a, a more preferred Sunday evening drive or a more preferred Sunday morning drive. It's just a very uh, specific statement now. And I cannot find confirmation whether he took the Niagara Aero Car or not. Um, so sorry that we couldn't bring you all the facts today. I should also mention that the entire river here, that we're in Canada, and this is in the United States of America, this is in New York State, and uh, New York State is home to maybe one of the greatest James Bond filming locations that has never been used, and I hope that they use it in the next upcoming Amazon James Bond feature film. Niagara used to be the capital of Canada, but the problem with having the capital of Canada right here is that that's a fort that's in the United States. So during the War of 1812, uh, it was very easy to invade the capital of Canada. So they eventually moved it to York, which is Toronto, and then eventually to, to Ottawa, where it's at now. Uh, this city also used to be called Newark, but I think after a bad experience flying to Newark Airport in the 1700s, they decided to, to switch it to Niagara. That's all I know about Niagara. Hello there. We're doing some time lapses from our hotel room. Because the weather was a little uncertain, uh, we decided to upgrade our rooms to have the falls view. So worst case, it's raining. We can't go down to the falls. At least we can do some, some of our work from up here. Uh, also, if it does happen to thunderstorm, we figured that up here would probably be the safest place to actually take pictures from. Not only because we're just going to get drenched out there, but also just from the, the lightning and the, and the striking of the humans. I, I would say the main thing when you're doing a hotel time lapse is you're probably going to be seeing a lot of reflections. So make sure, one, that you turn all the lights off in the room. And if there's anything that is white and reflective like these blinds, do your best to kind of hide them or maybe bring some, some gaff tape and actually like gaff them over like that. And then another tip, what you can see here is I've actually just tilted my tripod into the window. So the closer you can actually get to the window, the better. Um, and I also tend to shoot pretty close to wide open most of the time whenever I'm shooting through glass. Obviously the Nikon glass is incredible, 
but this uh, this window pane is a little bit dirty. So the closer I can get to it, the less you're actually going to see. Another key part of time lapses is to actually make sure there are moving elements within it. I know that sounds silly, but if it was just a straight overcast sky today, it wouldn't really make a fantastic time lapse and it would be just simpler to do a regular video clip. Behind me is a very important boat, but it's actually the replica of a replica of the original boat. This one was uh, a floating restaurant. Tim wants to go here for dinner. I think it's, I think it's been closed for a few years. This doesn't feel real. This weird silent boat. I think we should go watch it go through one of the locks. Casual day here. I think I'm winning the race I'm a little bit faster. It's probably faster in the ocean, but I'm faster on, on land. It's time to enjoy our jerk chicken in the car because it's uh, it's quite wet outside right now, and it doesn't look like the weather's gonna clear up for the rest of the day. So um, we'll see we'll see how it goes. But for now, it's probably the best jerk chicken I've had in Canada. I think it's important when you're in a tourist town, don't just go to the the I guess the chain restaurant that you'd expect. Um, maybe have a look for something that's locally owned that you can actually go in and have an experience rather than just a generic like you know it's gonna be okay experience. This was definitely a, a big positive surprise. Nothing like jerk chicken in the pouring rain, watching boats miraculously get lifted up in time and space and then continue on to a life that I'll never know. That was pretty cool watching that boat, wasn't it? Yeah, it was wild. It was so fast. I thought it would take like an hour. Yeah. It was going to take a long time. But... Yeah. Niagara Falls, definitely a bit of a tourist spot. If you hadn't noticed, there's a lot of things for tourists to do here. Uh, the first act of tourism in Niagara Falls is actually a bit of a sad one. Uh, so a few of the hotel owners in the local area came together and they were like, what can we do to bring tourists to Niagara Falls? And they decided that they would put a bunch of animals on a boat and exactly what you're thinking, they, then they pushed it off the falls. So there were, there were two bears, a bison, uh, allegedly uh, two foxes and up to 15 geese. Some reports say two geese. And apparently 10,000 people showed up to, to watch that happen. They, they let the boat go and the hull actually broke apart in the Niagara River up here and the boat started to fall apart and the two bears got free and they swam to Goat Island so they were safe. Uh, the rest of the animals unfortunately went over the falls and one goose is said to be the, the lone survivor of that. So um, that was a bit of a sad story. Sorry to, sorry to bum me out. We're here in Niagara on the Lake and usually this park is full of people. Today there is pretty much nobody here, which is amazing. Uh, there's a photo I've wanted for a long time. I've tried to do it with a lot of different couples, but usually when there's 50, 60 people in the frame, it's either a lot of Photoshop work or the image just doesn't come together basically with the, the clouds in the background. Um, the very strange and unusual horizon line. Um, but today I think everything just kind of looks amazing. So I'm gonna do a photo from here. It is the, the leading line into the gazebo framed by both of these trees kind of perfectly. Um, basically the gazebo kind of comes up like this and it's just perfectly framed. There is some texture in the clouds, which is amazing. And uh, the tones and the colors just go so well together with the, the paint that they have on the gazebo and everything just like, this worked out really, really well. Some geese over here. part of Ontario is known for two things. One of them is Niagara Falls and the second is wine. Even Wayne Gretzky has a winery here. You got a pretty good splash pad as well. It's for the kids. So I think six seconds is my happy spot. You still get the nice flowy water but there's still a little bit of texture to it. There actually used to be two additional waterfalls. One of them over this way here that's been kind of patched up with concrete long long time ago but there's another waterfall there and then somewhere else along here there was another one but I can't see that there's a pipe 
just with like a little drip of water that's coming out. And that's an old waterfall that they, they thought that the focus should be over here. Too many waterfalls, not good for business. Two waterfalls, great for business. Oh, it's great. Love it out here. Weather sealing. Tim and I are probably feeling a lot more uncomfortable than my camera is. I can't really complain. We did pay to come see falling water. And we're just, we're getting more than we paid for. We paid the $10 for parking, expecting to see a little bit of falling water, but now we're seeing falling water in a full immersive 3D environment. We are on our way to Outback Steakhouse. I worked at Outback Steakhouse for seven years of my life. I started as a busser, then worked in the kitchen, made Bloomin' Onions for a couple of years, then started to serve. And then before I got into the management role, uh, the restaurant was actually closed. And uh, this is one of the last three remaining locations in all of Canada. Sticking with the theme of Niagara Falls here, the Outback Steakhouse appears to have created their own waterfall. Uh, unfortunately, I guess it's low tourist season, so it's not functional right now. But I appreciate the effort. It's very nice. to a very spooky, scary morning here at the falls. Sun sets over here, so not so good, but sunrise rises over here with the potential to actually illuminate the falls. Uh, obvious struggle is that everything is very, very misty and foggy right now. So I'm hoping the sun burns a little bit of that away and actually adds sunlight to the falls. But right now, definitely looking like a movie set with these birds just appearing from nowhere. So this guy didn't really cooperate with what exactly we wanted to do, but overall, I don't know, good excuse to wake up. Got some images that I liked. Uh, they weren't the ones that I came here for, which I think is kind of what all landscape photography is about, doing the best you can within the elements that you're given. And uh, I think that we got some pretty unique elements and uh, I'm happy with the images, so let's, uh, let's head out. Hi, I'm Taylor. Please hire me for your next commercial video production. These are some of my cinematic movements. <laughs> 